हाई एवरी वन आई एम शाहन लाइक वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल एंड टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट वॉट इज सैंडीफार सिंड्रोम नाउ वाई आई एम डिस्कसिंग दिस सैंडीफार सिंड्रोम इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सैंडीबर सिंड्रोम इट केम सेवरल टाइम्स इन नीट पी जी डी एन बी एम्स पी जी पी जी आई पी जी ऑल दीज एग्जामिनेशन and it was also asked in fmg examination so it is very very important from the competitive point of view so let us learn about sandifer syndrome but before that let me tell you this youtube channel contains uh, many medical videos more than uh, 400 uh, medical videos so if you want to uh, subscribe you can please subscribe our channel because this channel will always deliver you different medical topics so what is sandifer syndrome basically sandifer syndrome is a medical disorder it can be found in children and adolescent this is very very important so what is the age group of the sandifer syndrome the age group is children and adolescent and what is the thing that is uh, that happens in sandifer this is very very important one is gerd another is neurological feature so these two one is grd grd means gastroesophageal reflux disorder gastroesophageal reflux disorder along with you will have neurological symptom like seizure like phenomenon i will uh, tell you in details about this two so this two when grd gerd and neurological phenomenon combine together in children and adolescent it is sandifer syndrome it is sandifer syndrome very very important now what happens in sandifer always remember this line paroxysmal spasm of head neck associated with gerd so there is a paroxysmal spasm of the head and neck so always remember there is a spasm there is a paroxysmal spasm of the head and the neck that is associated with the gerd that is associated with grd gastroesophageal reflux disorder so this was first reported in 1960 always remember it was first reported in 1960 and it is named after paul sandifer paul sandifer is the person uh, after whom this sandifer syndrome is named paul sandifer now let me present a case of the sandifer syndrome basically what happens paul sandifer uh, when he was working um, uh, he he noticed pediatric population basically he noticed this case in five children and this five uh, children was having a kind of neck uh, spasm a kind of neck spasm so neck contortions pronounced after eating and when this children were, was just eating food then after eating food this children was having a spasm in their neck so it was just a contraction in their neck that was happening after eating food so this was noticed by paul sander uh, on five children basically he presented a case on uh, based on uh, based on that five children so he observed the five children and later he presented a case and it was named after him so it was uh, came to be known as sandifer syndrome now let me explain to you about uh, this one about sandifer in details first you can see this sandifer syndrome i have drawn a picture this first picture is showing you the gerd now you know gerd gastroesophageal reflux disorder you can see this is the acid all these are acids and these acid in the stomach is rising above because the less that is the um, lower esophageal sphincter that is not properly functional it is loose it is weakened and because this sphincter is not working so the acid is going or moving upward and it is coming to the esophagus portion so this is grd and along with that you can see this is the spasm of the neck basically it is a paroxysmal spasm of the head and neck it can be found in the children and when these two combine together we get the sandifer so basically what is sandifer 
Sandifer is the combination of acid reflux disease along with torticollis. Along with torticollis, abnormal body movement. You can see the movement is abnormal. And uh, basically, this was in the question. Once it was asked in the competitive exam question that uh, Sandifer uh, syndrome symptoms has uh, has similarity with the symptoms of the seizures. So these symptoms, the Sandifer symptoms, uh, has mimics Sandifer's uh, symptoms mimics the seizure. It is not actually seizure activity, but it always mimics the seizure. Now you can see this is what is the onset of this. Do you know the meaning of the term torticollis? Let me explain to this term. What is torticollis? Torticollis is actually a neck stiffening, a kind of stiffening of the neck. Basically, it is the SCM muscle which is stiffened. So, you know, sternocleidomastoid muscles which helps in uh, moving the head to one side and that is torticollis. Now, uh, what is the onset of this disease? This disease basically occurs in infancy and it can also be found in early childhood. Very, very important. Infancy and early childhood. Basically, the pediatric uh, population are engaged in this disease. Now, what is the peak prevalence of this disease? The peak prevalence of this disease is 18 to 36 month. 18 to 36 month. Now, let me uh, tell you about these symptoms. I told you it looks like seizure activity is going on in the child. You can see the symptoms mimic seizure. And this is uh, a PGI question. This is a neat PG question. I forgot um, uh, to mention. I think uh, I have mentioned it. So, you must remember this. The symptoms mimic seizures. Seizures. This was the question. Always remember. So, Sandifer syndrome mimics Caesar activity. It looks like the Caesar is going on. You, you can see how this movements, they have abnormal movement. And this movement occurs after taking food. When the pediatric population, when the children has taken food, after that, you can get this Caesar-like activity. Basically, that is why the doctors are confused. So, I have drawn this. So, doctors are confused. And what is the pathophysiology of this disease? Do you know? What is the pathophysiology? The pathophysiology is unknown. Basically, it is thought that GERD can be a path pathophysiology, acid reflux, but it is not the proper pathophysiology. We don't know. It is unknown. It is idiopathic. Now, the GERD patient, those patients who have GERD, uh, less than 1% of the GERD patient, they develop the Sandifer syndrome. So, not all patients who had uh, the GERD do, uh, develop Sandifer Less than 1% of the GERD patient develop the Sandifer syndrome. Now, let us come to the signs and symptoms. You can see that the baby is being feeded and after feeding, the baby uh, gets various symptoms of GERD. So, symptoms appears just after feeding. This is very, very important. If a case is presented to you that the baby is uh, feeded and after that some symptoms of seizures and GERD symptoms appears. Uh, so, you can understand this is a case of Sandy Fur. Okay, now let me tell you this one. You can see how this baby is uh, tilted. Basically, the head tilted backward. Pardon for the background news. Uh, sorry, background music and sounds oh, i'm sorry head tilted backward so always remember this one the head is always tilted backward and what about the elbow the elbow will be uh, forward bending you can see it will be forward bending and what about the hip the hip will be backward bending the hip will be backward bending you can see backward bending of the hip the head will be tilted backward and the elbow would be forward. So, it, it was also asked, elbow would be forward, hip and head will be backward. You can see backward bending of the hip and head is backward. So, these two are backward and elbow would be forward. Now, what is the symptom uh, time? How, how much uh, time this symptom will lie in the patient? So, it will occur with a duration of 1 to 3 minutes. Okay, For 1 to 3 minutes, you can get these symptoms this kind of symptoms and it can occurs 10 times a day so 
it can occur several times a day maybe 10 times a day now what is the associated symptom of this disease so there are seven associated symptoms like number one is epigastric discomfort the patient will have epigastric discomfort epigastric region discomfort vomiting whack whack coughing <coughs> a wheezing a, a, a kind of sound in the nose mm, like that another is the sleep disturbance poor weight gain an abnormal eye movement you can see rolling of the eyes this abnormal eye movement is known as eye rolling it is known as eye rolling all these are the associated symptoms of the sandy fire very important now let us come to the diagnosis part how we can basically diagnose this disease first is uh, we have to go for the treatment of the GERD and the movement disorder so we need to find out uh, what is happening first the doctor will notice the GERD and the movement disorder next next we have to do the video EEG monitoring because this EEG monitoring will differentiate the seizures from the posture related posture related acid reflux so we can uh, we want to differentiate between the seizure and posture related acid reflux so we'll do video EEG monitoring another uh, thing we have to do is the simultaneous esophageous esophageal pH study so we will do the pH monitoring pH study of the esophagus phagus, so that we can understand uh, how much uh, uh, acid is there and we can understand it so these helps in diagnosis basically number one EEG monitoring so that we can differentiate between the seizure and the posture related acid reflux another is the pH study now let me tell you one important very very important uh, part that is it is not a life threatening disease very important it is not a life threatening condition sandy fur syndrome is not a life threatening disease it has good prognosis very important sandy fur has a very good prognosis it is not life threatening and what is the management let us discuss about the management number one the treatment for the GERD that and hiatal hernia Bas basically this GERD is also associated with hiatal hernia you you have you know hiatal hernia hernia is there and there is a hole and through which uh, the part of the stomach goes out and in part of the um, bowel moves and that is hiatal hernia so we have to treat for the GERD and the hiatal hernia and most case uh, basically resolve within first 24 months so all most of the cases this will resolve within the first 24 months so within two years I, I guess this will resolve and what are the management basically number one is the modification of the food habit this is very important feeding habit how the baby is feeded what are the things the baby is feeded what is the timing of the f food and uh, what are the items that is feeded to the baby all these things like the modification of the feeding habit the diet and exclusionary diet some diet may be excluded by the doctor so the doctor will tell you which diet uh, should uh, be prescribed and uh, what are the food that should not be given to the baby so, uh, so that the baby remains comfortable and the baby remain away from God so this diet will be decided by the doctor and another thing is positioning of the child this is very important so these three things modification of the fooding, feeding habits diet exclusionary and positioning of the child this will be used as the monitoring for the management of the sandy far syndrome now let us come to the medication what are the medicines that is given number one medication is h2 receptor antagonist very important h2 blocker another is ppi proton pump inhibitor all these are basically given in GERD patient another is antacids another is prokinetics all these are given now if the medical therapy is not properly functional or the patient is not responding properly to the medical therapy for the GERD and the person is having a severe GERD 
then we will go for fundulification. This is basically a surgery. You can see how fundulification is done. So all these are the treatment. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like this video, press the like button and write down in the comment section below. If you like this video, I will make many more videos like this. Please write down in the comment section below. It may it motivates me and it inspires me to make many more videos for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.